All right, so we're going to pick up in this section and we're going to graph by plotting points and then we're going to ask to give the domain and the range. When we're asked to plot points, we're going to make an XY table. We're going to choose values for x, substitute them into the function, and solve for y. That will give us an ordered pair, and then we're going to plot our collection of ordered pairs. Now, understand that we can choose anything we want for x, but oftentimes there's some easy ones that we usually work with. Um, I'm just going to give you some select ones today in the lesson. Um, usually we'll do a lot with negative 1, 0, one, I'm going to put a few extra ones on there, two and three, just so we get the idea and you get used to this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the original function, which is f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 3. And everywhere there's an x, we're going to put a parenthesis. Okay, and we're going to use that setup to solve. So the first thing we want to do is we want to let x equal negative 1. So when I say x equals negative 1, everywhere there's an x, we're going to put a negative 1 in there. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2. So then we would get 3 plus 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is a 6. So that means... When x is negative 1, we solve for y, y is 6, because remember f of x means the same thing as y equals. So that's going to be your y value. That is the ordered pair. Negative 1, so I start at 0, 0, and I go negative 1 up 6. That's, that represents that point. Now we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to evaluate when x is 0. So I'm going to say when x is 0, we plug a 0 everywhere there is an x into our original function. 0 squared is 0, minus 0, plus 3, so this becomes 3. The ordered pair is 0, 3. We start at the origin and then just go up 3. It's going to be right there. All right. Now we take this, we're going to do when x equals 1. I'm going to say, all right, let's let x equal 1. Well, 1 squared is 1, minus 2 plus 3. That's going to be negative 1 plus 3, which is just 2. It's the order pair 1, 2. So start at the origin, go over 1, up 2. And that's that point. And you can see this is uh, very methodical. We're going to complete this, continue this method until we've gotten a nice little picture of our graph. So we're going to plug in a 2 this time. Let's say x equals 2. 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 plus 3 is going to be 3. All right, and we will do one more. So first of all, let's clear this out. You can see I'm always substituting back into the original function whatever value I choose for x and solving for y. So 3 squared is 9 minus 6 plus 3. That would be 3 plus 3, which is going to give us a 6. So now I need to go back. I need to graph this 2, 3. So over 2, up 1, 2, 3. And I need to graph 3, 6. So start at the origin, go over 3, up 6. And then we can connect these to see our parabola. Now, we want to name our domain. Remember, the domain is the x values, and we name them left to right. Well, this is my x-axis, and then this is my y-axis. My values of x are going to be, since it's an arrow, it's going to be negative infinity, because it would just keep going, keep going, keep going. And my arrow to the right would be positive infinity. So domain is all the x values from negative infinity to positive. The range is going to be the y values. So we're looking on this axis. And we want to know the bottom to the top. So if I start at the bottom of my page, I move to the top. My function starts at 2 right there. So bracket 
to and it continues up actually to arrows on both sides so arrows pointing up says infinity forever so your domain and your range all right part b g of x is negative 3x squared i'm going to graph by plotting points i'm going to make an xy table um these are usually some standard ones, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Uh, nothing specific there, just going to choose some points. I think in my math lab you usually only need two points. You need a vertex and then one other point and it will graph a parabola for you. But we're going to practice the process. So if my function g of x is negative 3x squared, everywhere there's an x I'm going to put a parenthesis. And then we're going to start substitute. So, let me move that out the way. All right, I'm going to start with x equals negative 2. I'm going to say x equals negative 2. That means everywhere there's an x, put a negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And then that would give me negative 12. Okay. The next one we're going to do is evaluate when x is negative 1. And we'll put a negative 1 in there. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative 3, which is just going to be negative 3. Okay. Continue on. This time we're going to let, we're over here, we're going to let x equals 0. Well, 0 times anything is just 0, so that's easy. Zero is usually easy one, and ones are usually nice to work with as well. We are now to this one, x equals one. So one squared is one, times negative three is just going to be negative three. And our last point that we're going to work with, if we get a good um, idea of our graph, we won't need to do any more points. If I don't have a nice picture, I'll just need to add some more points to this thing. So. Uh, we're going to do an x is 2 this time. 2 squared is 4. And then 4 times negative 3 is going to be negative 12. I want you to also look over here to the, to the right. If you look at these y values, do you see that this is, you can tell this is going to be the vertex because these start webbing out to be the same. So 0, 0 is here. And then negative 1, negative 3 is here, 1, negative 3 is here, and then negative 2, negative 12, this is about 10, so I'm just going to roughly estimate down here and here so we can get an idea of this graph. So. And remember in the previous thing when I said the A term, if this number is negative, we know it's a uh, parabola open down. Okay, those rules apply, but for right now we're just asked to sketch this. So that's going to be our answer. Um, and when we look at this, this table, we can kind of see where the vertex is. The vertex is going to be the point at which, um, the point in the middle in which the, the other values just kind of start to web off eventually. So that's always nice to recognize. Anyway, so now we're going to be asked to tell our domain. Your domain is your x values from left to right. The leftmost x value is just going to be an arrow pointing to the left arrow. So you get negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is the y values, and it's the bottom to the top. Well, the bottom most y values are arrows that are putting, pointing down. So negative infinity, and I go up to the top most y value. So I'm on my y-axis, and then my graph stops at 0. So it's 0 with a bracket. So the domain is your x values, left to right. And the range is your y values, bottom to top.